For years, he kept saying, I want to go to communist countries. Everyone said, no, that's not possible. You just can't go there. We just passed through the missile crisis in Cuba. To give a visa to Americans to travel to Russia in 1971, it's just unheard of. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> When I was in Moscow airport, as soon as they found Bhagavad Gita, they called police, custom checking. The police man was crying, you know. He said, not serious of them. Don't send to him in the concentration camp. As we would pass churches, he would see that there were armed guards in front of the churches. Nobody was going in and out. Prabhupada said after that the ordinary citizens of Russia are spiritual, but because of their leaders, they have no access to God anymore. I went to a bank to change some money. Outside the bank, there were two boys, and they came up to me. Do you have any Beatles records? I said, ah, no, but the Beatles met my guru, and he's back in my hotel room. Wow! <laughs> And they came back with me to meet Prabhupada. But this Russian boy just drank in every word that Prabhupada said. You know, he asked the most cogent questions right away. You know, who is God? What, who am I? What am I here for? What is real activity? And Prabhupada explained all of that to him in such concise detail. He convinced him completely beyond any doubt that he should take on this mission and take the greatest risk you can take. Religious books were completely forbidden. And in fact, if anybody was even caught producing a religious book, he could be executed. I gave him my Bhagavad Gita, and from that text, he was able to copy it and translate it and spread it throughout all of Russia during communist times. Some of the books were smuggled into the country so they would make photocopies of them I went to one flat and saw how the all the devotees were sitting with photographed copies of each page and they were stitching the books putting them together and going out and from that one little seed thousands of Krishna devotees came up We all got a letter in late September with a list of 20 names. I want these people to come and join me in India. I just looked on the list. My name was on it. I was over the moon. India at last. And he brought back Westerners wearing saffron, shaved heads, seekers, sacred clay, and women in saris. I mean, this was an incredible sight. Americans, Europeans, boys and girls, and it just took India by storm. India had never seen anything like this, these sadhus from the West. People would come up with it and they'd go like this to our skin <laughs> and look at it like they thought maybe it was going to, this whiteness was going to come off, you know. The whole town was just suffused with Krishna consciousness. The entire town was on fire with devotion. Prabhupada brought his followers back to India because he wanted to revive and tell the people of India that the greatest treasure is the heritage of your own country. But you've forgotten it. You've neglected it. I brought these people back to remind you of what you have forgotten. India is famous with a spiritual culture. So when he came with so many white keen disciples, it was for India, they felt proud for that. Because our culture, Western world appreciate. And then we started putting on major festivals. We got the grounds in the heart of Bombay and built a huge elaborate tent. Several million people over that 10 days got to sit and listen to Swamiji speak.
It's the Rathiyatra Festival coming to the heart of London from Jagannath Puri, India. There, it's a 2,000 year old festival attended annually by over a million people. Here at Marble Arch, the number of worshippers may be less, but they are no less devoted to finding their eternal happiness in Krishna consciousness. The Rathiyatra festival is an ancient Indian tradition that Prabhupada introduced to the West. The deities spend the whole year in the temple and this is the day that they come out of the temple so everybody can see them. People seem to really respond to that idea. Victory for Prabhupada, this Rathiatra going right down, like the main byways there in, in London to Trafalgar Square. And he just danced and walked the entire way. This was conquering London, conquered the British. When he was young, when he first met his spiritual master, he was into the Gandhi movement. He wasn't in the British rule. So now he came and took over Britain 